So let's get going. Um, we're going to be spending probably at least an hour talking through this. I, I have literally no idea how long this is going to take to go through the information. Um, I allotted two hours, but we may get through it much quicker. So um, there is a lot of information to cover and I just want to make sure that we have enough time to, to get through it. So here we go, the agenda. Um, I'll give you a short introduction to um, Weave and who I am and just some context around um, the organizations that are here to support you as small business owners. We'll talk about the SBA Economic Injury Loan, um, which has been obviously in the press so much recently and is going to be a valuable resource potentially. Um, other sources of emergency working capital that you should be thinking about or at least be aware of. Um, I do want to touch on the types of debt to avoid at this time. Um, we'll also consider some ways you can manage your cash flow and other factors that you could be considering for your business at this time. And then there'll be some resources to guide you and uh, an opportunity for Q&A. So just to give you a little bit of context about Weave, uh, we're a nonprofit founded uh, 29 years ago to support women small business owners in Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. Um, we predominantly support women business owners, but we also do um, have male business owners that we support too. And we provide training, uh, consulting, and we also fund uh, startup and expansion loans. We have various sources of funding, um, government from federal, state, and local. We have private donors uh, and corporations that also provide funding to us. And that's um, also how we fund our loans as well. So there's a lot of acronyms and I wanted to just give an overview of some of the acronyms so that there's um, some clarity around that. So WEAVE is designated as what's called a WBC, a Women's Business Center, um, which is funded by the Small Business Administration. That's another acronym you'll hear a lot, SBA, WBC, EDC, WEAVE. So I just wanted to get some clarity there. Um, we do have um, other sources of funding. So it's not just SBA funding that we're giving out. Um, the SBA also has what are called small business development centers um, all over the country, which are called SBDCs. <laughs> the local SBDC in this area is the EDC, the Economic Development Collaborative. Uh, they're based down in Camarillo, but they have representation in Santa Barbara County, Ventura County, and LA. And um, we work pretty closely with the EDC. Um, we worked especially closely during the Thomas and Woolsey fires um, and the debris flow. And um, um, that was kind of our training ground for disaster recovery. So I just want to acknowledge um, Claire and her team and everybody at the EDC because we do share a lot of resources and support each other. So let's jump right in. Um, giving you a little bit about the SBA. The SBA is a government agency at a federal level and it was created to support uh, small businesses and entrepreneurs. They fund loans um, through banks and I, I'll talk about that. There's kind of in peacetime, let's say, they, they make their funding through banks. Right now they're making funding directly to, um, to small business owners. They also provide training and development and they fund organizations such as ours um, and the small business development centers. So um, you've heard um, in the press that they have committed approximately $7 billion um, to loans um, to help with the recovery. Um, there's information coming all the time about um, the context of these loans and deferments and forgiveness. Um, there's an additional 300 billion that's been proposed to assist small businesses. There's a lot of information. Um, and at the moment, we're still deciphering, you know, what is real, what is going to stick and what is just being talked about. Um, so the economic injury disaster loan is typically, um, it was created for disasters, for hurricanes, for wildfires, um, for crises moments. 
um, typically it's regionally deployed. Um, you know, we, we've never had a national disaster of this scale. Um, and I say that because from a resource standpoint, I imagine um, they're scrambling right now to get more people in place to help process applications. So it, it is taking longer to get the applications um, into the system. Um, and, you know, their website has been down sometimes also. So just be aware that um, that, that is the reality. Um, it doesn't mean you're never going to get through and it doesn't mean that your application is never going to be processed. Just it's going to take a little bit of ramp up time. Um, so I just ask that you need to be patient. Yeah, the website is it. It may be, I, I see that there's been some maintenance going on um, at the website. So again, it's just a question of um, keep checking back. But there's a lot you can do in the meantime um, to get your documents ready. So um, it is an online application. Uh, you are able to download PDFs of the application document and some of the other documentation um, that's required. And I can just quickly show you. Um, what that looks like. So here is an example of the, um, the loan application. You always want to make sure that you're ticking economic injury. Um, and then there's just, you know, typical personal information about you and about your business. Um, the different business owners, what I will say is that anybody that has more than a 20% um, ownership needs to complete. There is also a personal financial statement that people are required to complete. And this shows the assets and liabilities of the individual. The SBA will require collateral for a loan that's bigger than $25,000. Anything under than $25,000, they do not require collateral. You'll also be required to potentially complete um, three years of monthly sales figures up until the time of uh, the application. And I see lots of questions coming in. I'm just going to go through kind of the main points about the SBA loan and then we'll take some specific SBA loan questions. And then um, finally, ooh, I'm trying to... Um, there we go. And then a schedule of liabilities is also required, uh, who your main creditors are. Um, and then finally, a, um, a t IRS tax release is required. So it's also, and, and you know, that will take some time to complete. So anything that you can be doing in the meantime to try and get all this information together is going to be to your advantage. It's also helpful to have some specific information about um, how this uh, incident has, has impacted your business. Um, try and get as specific as you can. Ideally, if you have budgets or forecasts that you had originally prepared for this year, um, sales forecasts, um, and then how it compares to how things are right now, knowing that that is gonna change. There's no definitive answer on that right now. And it's also helpful for, um, for some storytelling, frankly. Um, you're presenting your case um, and it needs to be persuasive. So share what, what has happened. So traditionally, and, and I'm gonna speak to my experience with the SBA loan from the disasters, um, from the Thomas fire and the Woolsey fire and working with clients during that time. I think we're in a bit of a different paradigm with the SBA loan right now. Um, I'm hoping that some of the parameters have been loosened a little, specifically around credit. Um, because it's been, in the past, it's only been available to sort of this narrow band. You know, your, your credit score has to be good enough, but you can't have enough credit such that you have um, commercially available market rate, huge lines of credit available to you from other places. Um, that being said, I do feel like there's going to be a bit of a sea change around that now, um, just given the need to, to inject so much cash into the economy. 
this is a this is an area where um, I encourage you to persist with the SBA if they come back. Um, what they're trying to avoid is um, somebody who's sitting on you know piles of cash taking out this loan as well, um, because that's simply not fair. Um, we've talked about the collateral. So given that this is a federal organization, um, if you have any um, federal tax liens, any um, defaults on child support payments, um, if you've declared bankruptcy in the last seven years, I believe that, that may preclude you from getting a loan. Um, similarly for cannabis growers, I think that could potentially be um, a disqualifying factor. Again, argue your case. Um, if, you were, if you filed bankruptcy eight or nine years ago and they have a 10 year cutoff, argue your case and it's just worth persisting with them. So the terms of the loan are fixed uh, for everybody, apart from the only thing I didn't include on here is nonprofits. So a nonprofit would have a lower interest rate, 2.75%. Um, they will determine the uh, length of repayment period, but it is up to 30 years, which makes this such a compelling loan product and worth pursuing. Um, the, the terms of the loan are, are really excellent. And um, to add to that, no repayments for 11 months. So you wouldn't actually start repaying the loan until next February, which allows your cash flow to, to kind of get back on track. Um, there have been rumors of um, loan forgiveness. So, but again, that's information that's come out overnight and I, I don't really want to speak to that without having checked it out um, in detail. Um, I'm also hearing that the SBA are automatically deferring any um, uh, regular loans that they have through their banks, through their partner banks. Um, the filing information or the sort of the application timing process, I feel like this is um, optimistic, um, just given the resourcing that they're having to put in place. Again, you can do yourself a favor by getting all of your documentation ready so that you can submit a full package quickly. Um, the sooner you can get full information into them and get the ball rolling on your application, the quicker you will get money. It's also really important to note that um, this loan is going to be available through the end of the year. So um, it, it may be worth trying if you're I don't know if you're not successful now or if you, you're not clear about how much you need right now um, or if you feel like you can get debt from somewhere else and maybe use this at a later date, just know that it's going to be available for the remainder of the year. And who knows, that may also get extended. Once your application is in process or even if you have questions before then, um, you can contact them on this 800 number or send them an email and they will try to respond um, within 24 hours. Again, um, this is based on my experience during the Thomas and Woolsey fires and I'm not sure um, how, how quickly they're responding to inquiries right now, but um, to give it some time. Um, I'm just gonna jump over to the chat and to the questions. <sighs> Okay, see the PowerPoint. Okay, I'm sorry. It seems like some of you weren't able to see the, um, the documents that I put up on the screen, which show the uh, personal financial statement and the application. What I might be able to do is um, email those out to you afterwards, but just know that it is up there on their website and you can go in and see those PDFs for yourself. Um, there's a question about um, being approved for other relief loans. Um, can you apply for the SBA? loan as well. Absolutely. We are encouraging people to um, apply for, you know, any and all loans at this point, because we just, you don't know what you're going to get. Um, and it's just worth submitting. Um, be aware as it, if your credit gets pinged when you're doing a, an application. But I'll talk in a little while about we've, um, 
the WEAVE loan and the EDC loan and some other response loans that are out there, we're still saying to people apply for so both apply. Um, okay, so jumping into some of the questions. And uh, the kind of collateral that the SBA is looking for when the loan amount is over 25,000, typically um, it's, it's a, a material asset. So it can be cars, it can be house, it can be investments. Um, it's, you know, to not be too blunt, it's, it's anything that they could potentially put a lien on um, in order to get a repayment if you default. But again, I, I do want to stress that there may be different parameters around that in this instance. Do you know anything about SBA requiring personal guarantees from nonprofits? They don't require a personal guarantee from a nonprofit. What they will want to see is um, your audited financial statements. Um, business that was in startup mode and uh, one month away from opening. Um, I think it's it's worth trying. Um, what they will look at in this instance is sales forecasts. Um, we did have an example during the Thomas fire of a business that had just started um, renting those um, little motorized tricycle car things down on the waterfront at Cabrillo. Um, and they would look at the sales forecasts for that business um, rather than any, any history. It, it'll be difficult, but I think, it, again, it's worth persisting. And um, just on the sort of concept of persisting, what does that mean? That means um, they, the SBA will generally give you reasons as to why they declined um, the application. And this is where your storytelling comes in and this is where you're um, providing complete and full uh, information and records um, promptly to them comes in. I think you, you do get assigned a loan officer. Um, hopefully that's somebody that you can build some sort of relationship with in terms of they will have notes on file for you, they will record conversations, um, documentation. Um, so it's just a question of providing as much information as you can. Um, the SBA loan website is down. I did see something yesterday that they were doing maintenance on the site, so um, I do imagine that it, it will be back up soon. Just noticed a couple of other questions coming in. So close that for now. Okay, there we go. There's one more question. Available for consultants working as solo practitioners organized as an LLC? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I think that covers, um, I'm just gonna look through my notes quickly, see if there was anything else about um, the SBA loan that I wanted to mention. I mean, I will say this, you know, everybody's business is unique. Um, and um, if you do have questions after this event, then please email me. We do have a couple of contacts that have worked um, for the SBA in the loan um, department so we can try and get you some specific answers. Um, just going into the chat one more time. Um, in terms of specifics and, and types of industries, um, I, I can't speak to if there's a, a type of industry that does better than another type of industry with these loans. Again, I feel like they're, they're opening the doors um, to all business owners in this situation. Um, a business that hasn't started yet, um, I honestly can't speak to whether you would get funding. I, so I, th I think it's just worth applying and um, again, arguing your case. I'm checking the questions one more time. Are nonprofits required to provide collateral? Um, that's a good question. I don't know the definitive answer. My guess would be, I'm not gonna guess. <laughs> that's, a, that's an example of where I will get the information um, after this and get back to you. Okay, so I'm just gonna move on to other types of funding. If you do have questions relating to the SBA loan specifically, um, then um, maybe hold them and we can come back at the end.
Okay, so again, let's just um, take a breath and remember that this is um, 10 days, 12 days um, since the full impact of this has been felt, certainly in, in Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. Um, so this is a very fluid situation. Um, there are um, emergency loans that are coming online, um, you know, hopefully soon. Um, where there are loans in place, rapid loans, um, there is capital that's needed, like capital infusions that are still needed. Um, and there may be grants as well, but there are no promises right now. You need to just keep checking with your local um, agencies, organizations, organizations like ours and other CDFIs, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, I just want to emphasize that going into this conversation because there's a lot of people needing money right now and resources um, are running out, but there are more coming online. We just need to give it a little time for that to happen. So that being said, uh, we've and the EDC have implemented what are called quick response or emergency loans. The Weave loan is up to $10,000. Um, there are no repayments for three months. The interest rate is four and a half percent. Um, if you go onto our website, you can begin that application from there. We are an example of an organization that is um, running out of loan capital right now for these. We've had huge, huge demand, um, but we are actively talking to um, funders and foundations and, and banks and to try and get more loan capital infused. We recognize that we may be a bridge um, getting the money to you quicker than, than the SBA. Um, which isn't to say that the SBA won't get you the money, but it'll, it may just take longer. Similarly, the EDC, which is the SBDC down in Camarillo, Small Business Development Center, um, they're able to offer up to $50,000. Um, so a slightly bigger loan amount um, and a four and a quarter interest rate. I've mentioned other CDFIs. A CDFI is a, a community development financial institution. Uh, Weave is a CDFI, EDC is a CDFI, um, when there are organizations that can loan money, um, which aren't banks typically. So um, you can Google California CDFIs. Um, unfortunately, it brings up a huge list, but it, you may recognize some names on there if you're not in this area um, of CDFIs that are local to you. They may also have um, quick response or emergency type loans. I haven't had the time to go and look through um, all of the CDFIs to see who else is offering at this point. But as we do find out information, it will be on our website um, and I'll come back to that later. Another organization that um, can potentially help if you're in Ventura or LA County um, is the Jewish Free Loans Association. Uh, you don't have to be Jewish to apply. And it is individuals and businesses that can apply for up to $10,000 um, and a 0% interest rate, um, which is a pretty amazing loan product. Um, just, and during the um, Thomas and Woolsey fire, they were, um, they were a great resource. I haven't heard of anybody applying with them in this instance. Um, but again, you can visit their website and find out more. And I think you can begin the application process on, online also. Do you already have line of credit with your bank? Um, if you do, then that's something that you could potentially draw down. Who knows if they're gonna be changing the terms of these lines of credit um, at some point. So um, that's, that's a resource that's available to you now. Um, also, just it's worth talking to your local bank or your commercial bank and asking them if they have any um, emergency products, rapid response products in place, or if they're planning to get any. Um, this is a time when your voice counts. Uh, if you can um, lobby, you know, with your bankers, and we'll talk about lobbying uh, your representatives as well. And then the other type of um, funding that I've seen just very recently is um, through GoFundMes. Um, that is definitely a, a decision that you need to take on your own. 
Um, and it, where it's worked really well is where there are um, very loyal customers that um, are kind of that you're in touch with on a regular basis. So that's something to consider. I'm not going to provide any advice or guidance um, on that. Again, just reiterating, there will be funding and sources of funding coming um, to light all the time. It's just worth checking in with your trusted partners, uh, Weave, EDC, um, SCORE, to find out um, what is available. I do want to touch on the types of debt that you should avoid if at all possible. Um, the the kind of the things that you see online for instant loans, very quick loans. Um, we always advise against these um, simply because the interest rates are typically very, very high. Um, they will um, advertise an interest rate that um, may be a daily interest rate or a weekly interest rate. Um, and that can give a very different figure to an APR, an, uh, an annual interest rate. So, um, you know, we've seen 300, 400% interest rates. And what these lenders um, may do is get access to your bank account or to your um, point of sale and, um, and just automatically take their repayment first um, on a daily or a weekly basis. And um, that will just decimate your cash flow as you're trying to get through this situation. So um, I just always say avoid them. Um, there are times that um, in, in kind of normal business time that they may be helpful if you can be extremely disciplined, but um, in this situation, it could potentially ruin your cash flow um, as you recover your business. So that's, that's my um, public service announcement on that. So let's just go over some ways that you can be thinking about managing cash flow. Um, I mean, some of these go without saying, but I do want to just cover them. Um, cut out all unnecessary expenses right now. And that means going through your bank statement, going through your P&L, um, your spreadsheet, however you're keeping a record of the expenses that your business is, is, um, is facing and review every single line item and determine, is it critical? To your survival or is it not critical to your survival and um and you need to just you know no unnecessary expenditure at this point um from a sort of accounts payable perspective if you have terms with vendors and you can um, push your payments out to the edge of those terms but staying within those terms then then do so um, you know, we all like to be good, responsible business owners and pay our vendors on time, and that's great. Um, but right now you need to take care of yourself first. So if you have a 30-day term, pay it on day 29 instead of day one. Um, if you have good relationships with your vendors, um, or even if you don't have good relationships with your vendors, ask if you can pay in installments uh, weekly instead of monthly, for example, um, and stick to what you're asking them. Um, or if you can defer payments. Um, if you're speaking to your landlord, and, and these are some of the bigger, knottier issues, um, with landlords, Naomi is gonna have a webinar at this time next week where she'll get into the legal side of things a bit more. Um, but if you, know, you have a relationship with your landlord where you can just ask for um, a period of deferment, um, or paying in installments, then, then do so. Um, you know, we're all in this together right now. Um, and it shows that you're proactive and that you're a good tenant and that you're trying to work with your landlord to get through this. Um, we're not being prescriptive about asking for three months deferment or because the situation again is so fluid, but it is worth being in communication. Um, and you know, potentially adding on lease payments to the end of your lease, rather than trying to amortize it over the remainder of your lease. Um, 
The same really goes for utilities, um, lenders, credit card companies. It's just worth asking. Um, with every conversation that you have with, um, with your creditors, um, document everything. Find out who you're speaking to at a credit card company. If you're calling them up, getting a reference number um, and just reconfirming, making sure that you have everything written down from this period. And um, again, we're aware of tax deadlines that have been deferred. Um, certainly the um, Franchise Tax Board um, filing deadline is now June 15th. The IRS filing deadline is July 15th. Uh, payroll tax has a 60 day deferral, but uh, you do need to request that, don't automatically take it. Um, and there are more um, things that are being made available to you to help stretch out um, cash payments. From an accounts receivable perspective, um, if you're in a kind of business where you invoice clients and you haven't done so, because you're a little behind on your invoicing, spend that time invoicing now. Invoice everything that needs to be invoiced. Uh, if you have amounts owing, then just regularly check in with those customers and collect the amounts that are owing. Um, I urge you to take the time to sit down and um, map out your cash situation for the next four weeks, uh, the next two months, three months and give yourself best and worst case scenarios. What you're trying to do here is feel in control of a situation that feels very out of control. And what you're in control of is, um, is the expenses that are coming in and out of your bank account and when you can pay them. Um, you're gonna feel out of control if you don't have a sense of what those expenses are. Um, so, and you haven't done anything to try and mitigate some of those expenses. So this, this is an area that you can control. Um, I know it, it can be uncomfortable and painful to confront your numbers, but your numbers are gonna tell you the truth of, of what's happening here um, and, and give you some power to go out there and, and speak to people um, and you know apply for loans. If you're seeing a pinch point, if you're estimating a dollar amount, um, then that gives you a number to go and apply for a loan for. Um, I will touch on um, insurance and business interruption, but I've heard not so great things um, recently. Uh, I thought that business interruption would cover a situation like this. Unfortunately, a lot of insurers cottoned on to the last SARS epidemic um, in the Far East and have changed their business interruption to uh, exclude where a pandemic um, is in force. Now, this is an area that I think is, um, needs to be escalated up to the insurance commissioner um, because we've had government mandated closures and shutdowns. So to my mind, that's, that would override um, the pandemic clause, but I'm not an insurance expert. I just feel that this is an area where if enough people are lobbying the insurance commissioner, that this is something that pressure could be brought onto the insurance companies. So I'm not saying that it, it won't, um, kick in if you have business interruption, but um, speak to your insurance provider. Um, I did see some questions coming in. Okay, hang on a second. Can you confirm that federal payroll tax can be deferred? Um, Yes, I think there's a 60 day deferral on federal payroll tax. Uh, again, that's something that you need to request. Um, if you go to the EDD website and um, I'll give you some resources at the end where you can find that information. Yeah, yeah, there's just a comment that business interruption is only triggered by direct physical damage of property. I think it might be broader than that, um, but again, it, I don't want this to be a sort of hearsay area. This is something where you definitely need to speak directly to your insurers about that. Okay, so let's just move on. Um, <laughs> my screen just went forward. Yeah, where well, that is the right screen. Okay, so um, again, other factors to consider. <clears throat> As I've said, this is a very fluid situation. Um, 
there's going to be more information coming to light all the time. So, you know, find who your trusted uh, information sources are and, and keep checking back with the, uh, the COVID websites. Um, I'll talk to you about which ones in a minute. Um, the thing that I'm hearing more about in the last few days is um, that there's a perception that the city and state um, counties aren't doing enough at this time. Again, 12 days in, um, but there are a lot of disparities between um, cities across this nation and what they're able to offer small business owners. You know, I have seen cities that are, have put in place um, grant programs that have put in place loan funds. So this is an example of where your voice matters. Um, lobby and speak to representatives, city council members, um, assembly members, Senate, um, you need to tell them what you're experiencing. Otherwise, they're not going to be thinking to put these um, funds in place for you. So um, if you can find the information, and again, that's something that we're trying to get up on our website soon, is who the local representatives are in this area um, and try and get a pro forma document up for you as well. Um, your voice needs to be heard. Um, we are going to be doing a, a series of webinars, uh, again, Wednesday mornings for the foreseeable, you know, it could be four weeks, six weeks, we may have it permanently, but um, some of the issues that we'll be presenting on or how can you be pivoting your business right now? Um, what opportunities exist for you that um, you hadn't considered before because you were doing your day-to-day -day business? Uh, I'll give you a couple of examples of that. Um, with catering um, going to a home delivery rather than event catering. Um, so, you know, that could be breakfast and lunch. It could be breakfast, lunch and dinner. It could be any of the above. Um, but just rethinking that from a strategic standpoint with um, exercise, health, wellness, um, complementary medicine, um, what can be done remotely. We've seen um, yoga classes go online, dance classes go online, uh, acupuncturists and, um, and complementary therapists now doing telehealth. Um, so just, you know, consider things that maybe you've been thinking about or had an idea a few years ago, but simply haven't had the time to put it into place. And um, there may be an opportunity for you now. Um, I'm really big on speaking to on business owners, speaking to other business owners to try and generate something new between the two of you, partnering up. Um, you know, who are your fellow business owners at this time? Who is your community at this time? What can you all be doing together? Um, and again, that may be a future topic that we come back to. Um, I love talking about business resilience, so I'm, I'm happy to address that um, down the line. Um, and again, if you want to have us speak to a certain topic, um, then, you know, email me. We'll, we'll be happy to consider putting on a webinar of something that you will find useful. Um, pivoting your business, I think, is, is a really important thing to consider now. Pivoting your brand. Um, the other thing that we're hoping to get a webinar on is um, raising your profile online. You know, what are the strategies for doing that? So just know that um, we're thinking about you, we're, we're thinking about the best ways that we can support you um, and that we listen. And um, if there's something that you really want to hear us talk about, then, then let us know. So I talked about resources a lot throughout this um, webinar. Um, obviously I'm gonna talk about Weave first because <laughs> that's what I work for. Uh, we have a response line that you can call and um, someone from our team will get back to you within one business day uh, as of now. That may change to two business days depending on demand. Um, but know that that is there. Um, we have information and resources up on those pages. Um, I'm very conscious of the fact that um, there is this hasn't been presented in Spanish or as a bilingual resource. We do have bilingual resources up on our website um, and we are able to connect you um, to bilingual resources if you call in. We have a separate number um, for um, Spanish speakers. Um, in terms of the EDC, um, this to me is, they have produced a business resource guide that is basically um, my Bible right now in terms of information and resources. And that is available 
to all of you. If you click onto their website um, and there's a red button that says business resource guide, this is an incredible guide that's um, updated daily. Um, in the early hours of the morning, someone is getting up and making sure that all the information on that resource guide is, at, is accurate and up to date. It is very comprehensive for um, business owners and goes into detail on things that I haven't covered here today um, around you know, workers, um, employer rights, employee rights, um, and some of the detail around that, which I'm not covering. Um, all of the um, um, or national, you know, the EDD, the Labour Board, state information, you'll find those um, websites listed both on our website and on the EDC website as well. So um, I just want to, you know, shout out to EDC for producing such a comprehensive um, resource guide. It really is useful. Um, I, you know, these are your trusted sources of information. SCORE um, are an organization um, of um, business advisors and mentors. Um, they have local chapters in, in many areas, including Santa Barbara and Ventura. If you just Google um, SCORE Santa Barbara or SCORE San Luis Obispo, um, they provide free business advice and mentoring. Um, so it's worth speaking to them, particularly on um, if you're not financially confident, um, they may be able to help you go through your numbers um, and um, provide suggestions about um, cutting out unnecessary expenses and perhaps pivoting your business and, and helping you think through some of those things. Um, Weave and the EDC do have advisors um, that can also assist with that. So. And then finally, Cameo um, is the California Small Business um, Organization, Association, and they also have a really good website um, with lots of small business specific um, resources and tips and hints. So that is um, kind of the main resources that I would say at this time um, that you should be checking back with on a regular basis. Um, there's an awful lot of information out there and, and in a way going through the EDC or Weave um, or Cameo or, you know, score pages, they help, will help filter things for you um, and, and make it more digestible so that you don't feel you're having to read every single SBA email that gets released. Um, as I mentioned, we, we will have this webinar series again next week um, and for the foreseeable. Next week is where you get into some of the legal aspects um, of, of handling the COVID response. Um, Naomi Dewey from Trusted Legal will be leading that. She is, uh, she'll be talking about lease renegotiations, contracts, staffing issues, um, and I think that would be an extremely useful uh, webinar for you to attend. Again, to register for that, um, simply go onto the WEAVE website, onto the COVID um, response page, and you will find a link. Um, you will also get an email um, I would think early next week with a registration link on that. And we've opened up our webinars now. So um, there's not a hundred person limit, there's um, a 500 person limit. So you should easily be able to get on. Okay, I'm gonna um, just jump back into the chat. Um, that basically covers everything that I wanted to cover um, from a sort of pretty prepared standpoint, but um, I am willing to spend some time just going over questions. Um, if I can't answer everything, then, you know, I will go away and research. Um, so just jumping back to the point about insurance, yes, the clause about virus pandemics. Um, so um, this would be an opportunity to go back to the insurance commissioner, the state insurance commissioner. Um, the more people that are contacting the state insurance commissioner about something like this, and the more chance there is of um, having it um, changed, repealed, deferred. Um, downloading the slides. Um, yes, I need to get those out to you. Um, we'll figure out a way to do that and we'll figure out a way to get you a recording of the, um, of the webinar also. Um, let's just see, okay. There's something in the Q&A. Um, are there any recommendations for people who don't own their building and are renting? 
their space from a landlord? Are there ways to defer those payments at this time? Um, right, yeah, I mean, this is something that I, I spoke to. I, I think, it, you know, you, it's worth opening up the conversation with your landlord and um, just speaking to them um, about what possibility there is for a deferment um, of this month's rent payment. I mean, just take it one month at a time. Um, there may be um, information that comes out from cities, counties, state level that addresses that um, down the line. But for now, it's really, you know, building on the relationship between you and your landlord um, and, you know, offering to, you know, extend the lease by one month. Um, it's going to be hard for them. But, I mean, it's illegal right now to be evicted um, as a result of COVID. So, um, you know, the law is in your favor right now, but I don't want to speak too much to that. I think Naomi can address that um, much more clearly. Um, could inventory be considered collateral for the SBA loan of a small retail business? Um, I potentially, but I don't want to give a definitive answer on that. So that's something that I'm happy to go and research for you. Okay, so I know that we're massively ahead of our timeline. Like I said, I had no idea how long this was going to take. Um, I'm happy to stay on for a few minutes, but um, a few minutes more, but, um, um, but you know, feel free to jump off. Again, this is kind of the end of the official part of the webinar, but I will stay on for another 10, 15 minutes or so to answer questions. Uh, does Weave have spreadsheet templates available for profit loss or other financials? Um, yes, we do. Um, um, we can get you something for that. So um, if that's something that would be useful, we can have that up on our resource page. Um, so there's a question about filing for unemployment if um, you're on salary and an officer of the company. No, um, we didn't actually cover that in this webinar. And um, I think the, probably the best place for you to go for that information right now is um, to the EDC Business Resource Guide. Um, they may have more on that specific topic. And again, that is something that will be covered in next week's webinar. Should I wait to apply for an SBA loan to see if they give forgiveness? Or would that be applied to anyone at any time of the loan? Um, I, I would not wait. I, I really wouldn't. Um, I think it's important that you get your application in um, sooner rather than later. Um, you know, you can go through the whole application process and then end up deciding that you don't want to take the money. Um, but it's, it is a process and it's worth beginning it as soon as possible. Um, I, I would think if they gave forgiveness um, down the line, then that might um, apply to all of them. But it, I don't want to, I mean, that's conjecture at this point. And it's, the, the, the whole idea of loan forgiveness is, is, a, is a massive concept, frankly, um, in terms of um, the, the sort of financial and capital repercussions of that. So um, let's just see what happens. Um, Sam Piper Realty says they are exempt from the no eviction law. Do you know anything on this? I don't. Um, that is sort of concerning to um, read that. And um, what I can do is um, send an email to Naomi, who's going to be presenting our legal webinar next week, and um, just find out if there are exemptions to the, um, to the no eviction rule. But I'd be very curious about that. Um, for the disaster loan, should I do my taxes for 2019 now or just the sales numbers enough? Um, I, the SBA is not going to require that you have filed your 2019 taxes, particularly that they've extended um, the, the filing deadline now until July. Um, you will be required to produce sales numbers and um, also to provide financial statements. So um, 
get your financial statements for 2019 done, um, but you don't necessarily have to have filed your taxes. Um, how to best evaluate whether to take on a loan. We currently have five minutes of income available in the bank and don't want to take on debt if we don't have to. Should we wait? That's a great question. Um, I think that's probably um, best answered sitting in person with an advisor that can go through um, your income and expenses. Um, I, I don't feel like I have enough information to make that decision for you. Like I've said, um, the SBA a loan is, is a great product if you can get it. Um, the application process is worth beginning without any um, mandate that you have to then draw down the money. So um, we're happy, you know, if you want to contact us to try and um, get some time with an advisor to discuss that, then please reach out through our hotline. Quick response loans, do you submit business and personal bank statements or just business? Um, that's a great question. Um, I don't know the answer to that, so I will get that for you. Um, yeah, I'm not sure on the answer to that. In, in any of these situations, it's great just to have everything ready. You know, we kind of always prefer to have more information than less. Um, it may be that with a loan less than $10,000, we're not looking um, too closely at personals, um, but Again, it's just, that'll, that'll be different from loan to loan. Um, so just gather as much information as you can. We're paying off past taxes monthly. Is this an immediate denial of an SBA loan? It sounds like um, if you've reached a, a repayment agreement with the IRS and that you're on a payment plan, um, that um, is in your favor. So no, that would not be an immediate denial of an SBA loan. It's, it's more like where you've just failed to file taxes um, completely or you, know, you have outstanding penalties um, and amounts that you're just not paying. Is there a resource for how a not-for-profit can apply for SBA economic injury disaster loan? Do you, well, I mean, you, you go through the um, online application. If you're talking about working with an advisor, then again, um, contacting EDC, Weave or SCORE um, to maybe specifically address it from the perspective of a not-for-profit, um, then that will, that will help um, in terms of just understanding what the requirements are. Um, but it is, you know, this loan is open to non-profits non as well as for-profits. Okay, I think that's all the questions that I see for now. Um, just seeing if there's anything else that's come up on the chat. The chat is also looking empty. So at this point, um, I will wish you all well. And um, again, um, feel free to reach out um, to me through Weeb's website. Um, if you go into staff, you can find me. My email address is actually, I wonder if I can type this somewhere. I might be able to type this in the chat myself. Hang on, send it to everybody. Um, this is my email address, npar at weaveonline.org. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for your time and for, um, for joining this webinar. And um, again, just keep checking back with Weave, EDC, SCORE, Cameo websites um, for updates as they become available. Okay, thanks everybody.